Right, okay, uh, what we're now going to do is characterize the uh, servo. And as I said in the uh, previous video, um, I'm going to document uh, these results and uh, then I'm going to um, either provide those uh, to you in the PowerPoint uh, uh, presentation that goes with all of this. Uh, and then you can make up your own graphs uh, from the information I provide. So, but we're going to go through this together. This is what you'll be doing in the lab. And so we've got the same setup, nothing's changed since the last uh, video. And what I'm going to do is uh, set the uh, servo to rotate in a clockwise direction. So I'm pressing option number six on my um, HMI. And I'm going to start off with a number of 30 uh, to rotate clockwise, which is what we're going to get here. There we go. Right, now the scope uh, can hardly see the frequency here, depending on how it catches it. it uh, sometimes I'll get it because it needs two edges in order to do frequency. So I'm just going to close up the time base a bit like this, but it just takes longer to do it. So we, I'm going to write a table now. So I'm looking at the offset um, uh, versus the uh, frequency on the scope. Okay, so we've got an offset which is set at 30. And remember, this is on a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio on here. So we've got 30 and we've got a frequency that seems to be stable. This is 278 uh, millihertz. I'm not going to go to the decimal point because it's a bit unnecessary. Yes, it's because it's varying slightly anyway. So it's 278, 279. So the uh, millihertz are going to put 278 uh, millihertz at 30. And I'm going to change it to 50. Okay, and we're now going to see what uh, frequency you get now. I'm going to leave it running for a few cycles. And we've now got 478.2 millihertz. Let's just see how stable that is. Wait for another complete scan. Uh, it's 481, so it's around about 480 millihertz at 50. So 480 uh, millihertz at 50. Looking okay, that's good. Um, now I'm going to put it at, uh, let's see, um, uh, let's see, that's a step of uh, 20. Let's put it on at 70. So we're now at uh, 70 uh, microseconds. And now we've got a frequency of 657 millihertz. Let's just uh, let that scan once more. 657, yes, it's looking good at 657 millihertz. And I'm going to put it at 90. So we've got 90 microseconds. And uh, let's just have a look at uh, what we've got here. So that's uh, 740 millihertz. Just let it do one more scan and make sure that that's uh, stable. 740, 735, obviously varying a bit, so 735, 734, so if they do one more scan, as I said this is the sort of thing you'd be doing in the lab if you're doing this for yourself, 734, 736, so I've got to put 735 down for that, uh, millihertz, and now I'm going to put 110, So I'm going up in steps of 20 uh, microseconds. And let's see what we get now. 774, 774. Just see what happens on this scan. 774, and this one 774. So we'll go for 774 um, uh, millihertz. And let's go to 130 microseconds. And you'll notice it hasn't really increased much, but let's just see what's happened. That's 800. Eight hundred millihertz. Yeah, it's about seven nine six on that scan. <coughs> just do one more, seven nine six, seven nine six, uh seven nine eight. Yep, so let's go 798 
uh, millihertz and now let's put it into 150 it's 150 microsecond offset that's 810 on that one and let's just uh, do this again let's scan again that's 110 that's 112 do one more let's see what happens that's 813 so I'm going to put 813 uh, millihertz down and uh, let's now make this uh, let's see up by 20 that's uh, 170 so now 170 microsecond offset and let's just see what we get so it's uh, 815 now you can now tell this is actually really flattened off so we're at 815 on that scan uh, 814 815 so it's 814 so there's very little difference. So now if I increase this now drastically, I'm going to put 250 in. So we're now on 250 microsecond offset. And let's just see what we get. And we've got 818 now, which is, uh, you know, this is virtually twice uh, the offset, but it's only 818. And this is 814, pretty much the same readings we had last time. Just do one more scan just to satisfy ourselves that everything is, uh, is flattening off. That's 814, that's 821. Yeah, it's, it's varying a bit. So we'll put that down as 820. And now I'm going to put 500 in. And so we've got 500 microseconds. And let's see what happens. Uh, 500 offset we're on 819 on that scan that's 811 it's it's wandering around but it's actually less than it was in the last one which goes to show this whole thing is plateaued uh which is really interesting so that's 813 so it's fairly um it's definitely uh saturated at the pretty that's 819 so i'm just going to sit that at um to make it easy, I'm going to stick that 820 because the same values we had at 250 um, because it has flattened off and there's obviously a degree of variability in this uh, between readings, which is absolutely fine. So I'm now going to stop this and put zero in. So, and this is now flattened off to come to zero. So uh, that's great. So now let's see what happens. So this was on a one-to-one -one ratio, one-to-one. Uh, -one. And now I'm going to repeat all of that uh, with a uh one uh two to one okay so let's put this one onto here and we're gonna put that over there so here we've now got uh it's going to take two rotations here to get one rotation here and let's just line it up and so uh we're now going to run that experiment again i'm going to put in the compass clockwise option number six and we're going to put in 30. So now it's going to be much, much slower. So it's two to one. There we go. So let's put our uh, two to one ratio in. Um, and we've got the offsets, uh, which we've set at 30. And we're going to look at the frequency. Now then, it's going to be really hard to catch the frequency of this because it's uh, half of what it was before. Therefore, the scope's going to struggle to get this because you can't get two edges in. So I'm going to slow the scope down even more. And I'm just wondering whether this will work because once you get to very long time bases, this is on two second time base, uh, but we'll see what it comes out with. I don't expect this to be massively accurate, but let's just have a look and see what happens. And once again, just remember that... Uh, the signal is going from, um, there's our north position here, so this is going up to south, and then, um, and that's the transition at the southerly uh, point. But we're getting 137 millihertz here, 137 millihertz, and 137 again, so uh, 137 millihertz. 
And let's put in uh, 50, which is our next offset point. I would expect to be there to be a, a true correlation between the ratios. If I've got the drives uh, uh, genuinely are two to one, um, uh, there may be slight variations of that, but that's actually for you to actually look at and explain. Um, so let's see what we've got now for 50. And so we've got, uh, let's see, 154 millihertz. Let's see what's happening now. That's 252, there we go. So 252 uh, millihertz. So 252 millihertz. And let's just do one more scan. I know this is a bit of a ball's ache, but this is what you do in the labs. So uh, 252, 150, 251. So let's just make that 251 uh, millihertz. Now let's go to 70. Uh, put in 70 into the HMI. Now we increase the speed a bit more. So 70. Uh, so let's see what frequency we now end up with. And let it do a full scan because it won't be accurate at this stage. Sorry, let's be singing. <laughs> uh, right, so we've got uh, 327 uh, on this. Let's just see what it comes out with now is 337, I'm going to hold it at 337 uh, millihertz. Uh, let's put in 90. Da -da 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 -da. That, that's a 374 on that scan. Let's just see what happens. There we go, that's 374. And this is a 90 microsecond offset. 374. Uh, 384. Okay, let's just put 384 down. So there's gonna be degrees of variation here. Let's put 110 down. It's 408. I'll do one more scan. Actually, I can speed this up a little bit by uh, opening up the time base. It doesn't have to wait so long to get it. There we go. That's 408 uh, was the last reading it got. We can see the frequency here, 406. Okay, let's just put 406 down and let's put that to 130. 130. It's going a bit faster. Let's see a gradient change. That was 405 on that scan. Let's just see what this one does. That's 418. Uh, just double check, we've got 418 millihertz or something like that. Yeah, 417, that's good. So take 417 millihertz and we're now gonna put in 150. And just to do a few scans of this. Four hundred eighty. That's four two five on that scan, and we'll just uh, repeat this. Four two five. Four two five. Let's see what it's done this time. Four two six. Okay, we'll take four two six for that value, and one hundred and seventy. Which uh, this is where it started to plateau. So we've now got one hundred and seventy, and we've pretty much got the uh, same number. We've got four two five on that scan and 429 on this scan let's put uh, 429 down on that and now i'm going to jump to 250 and as you see it doesn't make a blind bit of difference so uh, we'll just do a few scans at 250 and that is 427 uh, that's 250 427 that's less than the last one which means it definitely has plateaued and once again 500 uh, we know this won't make a blind bit of difference, so I'd expect to see a, a very similar number. Um, so this is 428 on that scan, 
and 47 on that one, I'm going to put 47. So it is actually totally plateaued. That's not a two to one. So I'm going to put zero on here, stop that. And now I'm going to put it on its uh, lowest setting, uh, which is a one to two. And so a one revolution here, we'll do two on this. So it's going to go much faster. So uh, let's uh, do that all over again. And this is on a, uh, let's say, two to one, and let's go one to two. And it's going to make a table here whilst we're doing this experiment, just like you guys would do. So uh, now we're going to go option number six again, and I'm going to put 30 in, and, oops, <laughs> not a good idea, Raj. Uh There we go, that's looking good. Right, okay, so this should be a touch faster. So we've got, uh, let's see, 530 millihertz here. 530, that's 493. Let's do one more. That's 493. And this is 493. Excellent. So we'll put uh, 493 millihertz for 30. And now we're going to 50. So we've got 50 now and uh, 50 microsecond offset. There we go, I've got to, oops, uh, open that time base up a bit. There we go. There we go. So we've got 898 on that one, 898. And let's see what happens, 905, uh, 905, 903. Let's put 903 down and let's put 70. So we've now got uh, 70 and we've got uh, 1.2 hertz, 1.23 hertz, 1.24 hertz, uh, let's see, 1.23 hertz. So we've got uh, 1.23 hertz, let's put in 90. And that's 1.411 hertz, uh, 1.39 hertz, 1.39, 1.39, 1 1.39, we'll make that, 1.39 hertz, 110. Exciting, eh? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's 1.47, 1.47, 1.47. Yeah, 1.45, 1.46. Right, 130. And that's 1.53. Uh, 1.53, 1.53 hertz and 150. And so it's 1.53. 1.53, 1 1.53, yep, 1.53, and let's put this, that's 150, and 170. I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference now. Let's go, that's 1.55, 1.55, and let's put 250 in. And this uh, is already plateaued now, as we know from the prefix experiment. So we've got 154, uh, 1.54 hertz, 1.55 hertz, and it's going to put 1.55 hertz. And similarly for 500, which we know also shouldn't make any difference. That's 1.55 hertz, 1.55 hertz. Okay. That's good. Right. So let's just look at this in a little bit more detail since we're actually here. And I'm going to put this on a single shot. So I don't know how well you can see this. Uh, I'm just going to stop the compass because I've trapped this. What I'm interested in is actually what's happening here. You'll notice there's a lot of steps on here. I don't know how well you can see this. Um, but if you look at these steps here, 
These are the times that the software is taking to extract the compass data. So let's just open this right out. You'll see this stepped edge here. And you see it varies uh, quite significantly because there's, there's select maths going on and it depends what, um, uh, just on the timing um, of extracting data, etc. So obviously it's not actually totally consistent um, here. But in general, if you look at the smallest time period, we're on 10 milliseconds uh, per division here. And if I just move this across, there's one of the small ones here. So here we have um, uh, this is on five. Let me just check. <laughs> Get my glasses. Uh, yep, that's five milliseconds per division. <laughs> my eyesight's crap, so I don't know how you're going to see this. But anyway, it says five uh, milliseconds per division here. So it's taken five, um, six, seven, eight milliseconds to actually go from one sample to the next sample to get the new compass position because this is the um, this is the present compass position. So this is the change that's occurred. These are the changes, and therefore it's actually taken that's five milliseconds per division. That's uh, one division there, five and six, seven, eight. That eight milliseconds to actually go off and extract the data from here and process it, um, check for limitations and then uh, lock it into the DAX, which is what you're seeing here. So this is really, really interesting because it gives you an idea of how quickly the process is doing it. So remember the fact that at a minimum, this software is taking around about eight milliseconds just to extract the data from here. And that's why you end up with this very, very stepped uh, waveform. And you can see it because this is running so fast now. Uh, so it's quite significant. Um, and let's see anything else uh, that we can note about that. Uh, so the that's one of the shortest periods. Let's have a look and see if we can't find a long period. Um, let's see, there's there's a long one sitting in there. So that one here, and I'm going to put that to the center of the screen. There, there's two long ones there. Here's so there's also let's see five, ten, um, probably about thirteen milliseconds uh, to extract the data. Um, so really interesting question to find out to so like, well, why does, why does this vary? Well, this could be for all sorts of reasons. Um, uh, the um, setting up of the I squared C interface, uh, interrupt times, etc. So you get all these variations in there. So it's not a constant in terms of, and also depends on the value that comes back, what processing is being performed on it. And it's doing checks on values and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of stuff going on in terms of the software. And every time it changes the software for a particular number, then that will actually have a time impact on the processing time. And so this is why you'll see these time variations uh, in here. So it's not a, um, a, a constant um, uh, process uh, in terms of time. So I just thought I'd show you that uh, whilst we were there. It's not really important um, uh, for your uh, report, but it is important you to see. You might be able to use this in your report, so um, just think about it um, because processing time is important when it comes to doing these algorithms. Um, so we're going to stop now uh, and we now characterize the uh, servo and I will produce all of this in a table and you can make your own graphs for your own report. Um, and then what we're going to do now is we're going to look at proportional um, control as our next video. Okay.